geometric vectors are when we draw them out and we look at them and we measure size and we measure angle. And so we have a ray beginning at some point and heading off in one direction. The length of the ray represents the magnitude of the vector. The angle gives us the direction. So vector, two pieces, magnitude and direction. What we can do, how we saw these before, when we talk about algebraic representations of vectors, it's putting numbers to them. Yesterday we looked at saying something like we might have a force that's applied, a force vector that's applied. Uh, we push with 15 pounds of force at an angle of 135 degrees. We've got numbers in there. There's our algebraic representation. That would be, well, we've got a vector 135 degrees, and we'd say that would represent 15 pounds. Another representation is what Spencer just pulled out for us. 3V is taking that and putting three sections of V together. Well, we notice that we can write this um, in what we call component form. So using that example, V on its own, it moved five units in the horizontal direction. We could represent vector V as it moves five units in the horizontal direction, and it moves zero units vertically. At vector u, I'm going to go through examples and explain my notation. Vector u moved two units to the right, and it moved one unit down. Whereas vector w, now going back to the parent vector w without the scalar factor, the scalar multiple, vector w moved two units in the right direction, and it moves five units up in the vertical direction. What we have is this, another representation is component form where we put the numbers to it. It's the x value, it's the y value. So when we have a vector in component form, now to identify it as a vector, we use these triangular brackets. These triangular brackets, when you see these, these mean vector. Well, we've got the horizontal component. I'm going to save room. I'm just going to put it right underneath it. Comma, the y component. It's breaking it up just like a coordinate. And again, those triangular brackets mean vector. Now, if I'm consistent with my notation, I would put little vector arrows over each of my names. Um, not, it depends upon the context. To make it very clear that we're talking vectors, I would put the, the ray over the top. But if we know we're talking about vectors, I can just label it V, U, W, and everybody gets by. So when we have a vector, we can write it out as magnitude and a direction, being very clear what's what. Sometimes we can break it into our horizontal component, our vertical component. It makes it a little bit easier to add. So that last one, we had 3v plus u minus 2w. Well, what we are doing is we've got 3 times vector v, 5, 0. We are adding to that vector u, 2, negative 1. We are adding to that, or subtracting, minus 2 times vector w to 5. <coughs> now here's where addition, subtraction, uh, vector arithmetic is made much easier when we have things in components. Scalar multiplication, scalar multiplication multiplying just by a, a, a dilation factor, well, we distribute that. That would be the factor 3v as we talked would be 15, 0. We'd have plus u was 2, negative 1. Minus 2, well, this is plus oh, negative 4, negative 10. So there, in that step, I took care of the scalar multiplication. And exactly as was suggested with that example, all we need to do is add the horizontal components, add the vertical components. 15 plus 2 minus 4, 
gets us 13. 0 minus 1 minus 10 gets us negative 11. There's our resultant. I did two <coughs> things in here, two things in here. Identified what we mean by component form of a vector, how we can take a vector and rewrite it as the horizontal and vertical pieces. Also, just real quick, uh, arithmetic using component form. When we break things down algebraically, it's just combine the horizontal, combine the vertical. Isn't that nice? A little bit easier that way. Yeah. Now, geometrically, you're seeing, you're kind of visualizing what's happening here. So if you've got like a three-way tug of war, or three different forces pulling on something, this is the ultimate kind of outcome where it comes to, where the, the, the final force that's being applied happens. Here, it makes computation a lot easier. Comments, questions, concerns, how are we doing? Good? All right. We've got this 15 pounds at 135 degrees. I'm going to go back to this. 15 pounds at 135 degrees. That is in kind of standard notation where we just identify the magnitude and I've identified the angle. Can I take that and rewrite it in component form? So how do we switch from the standard form where we just identify separately the magnitude and the angle how can I put that into component form? Oh, we go back to that. That's our components. When we look down, we need the horizontal component, we need the vertical component. The horizontal component, the vertical component. We need that x, we need that y. There's our 135 degree angle. What's it? Ah, yes. So we know from, because we have mastered trig at this point, yeah. that's 45 degrees. <laughs> if we're talking about a bearing, uh, triangles still, still connect. So we can go back and use our trig. Uh, here, 135 degrees, I was basing it off of standard position. Uh, different from yesterday when north was zero up top, since we're not using a bearing, we'll keep it in standard position using like our unit circle. So cosine, <laughs> how do we find the cosine? Uh, X, horizontal, how do we find the horizontal components? Cosine. cosine, hey, I just said that. What's the cosine of 45 degrees? Two root two, two root two times 15. 15 root two over two. The vertical component, the y, how do we find the vertical component? Sine, what's the sine of 45? 2 root 2, uh, root 2 over 2. Did we say the wrong thing before? Root 2 over 2, unit circle. Uh, root 2 over 2 times 15. We've got 15 root 2 over 2. So that vector in standard notation where we separate, where we delineate the magnitude and the angle, we can put it into component form. Here, cosine's got to be negative. Cosine has to be negative. And here's where we drew the triangle. We had 45 degrees there. 135, if we think back to our unit circle, what's the cosine of 135? Cosine 135? Negative. So by keeping with that angle, it gives us the negative. So knowing a unit circle, we can identify what's positive, what's negative. Quadrant one, which components are going to be positive? Quadrant two, what component's going to be positive? Sine. So in terms of the vector, which component? It's going to be the y. Quadrant three, which component will be positive? Tangent's going to be positive. So x and y are going to be in negative in quadrant three. Quadrant four, cosine's positive. So the x will be positive, the y will be negative. So we can take this and it connects immediately to what we've done before. 
There we go. So we can take a vector as we have it, write it in component form. Not so bad. Makes things a little bit easier. Let's find magnitude. Let's say I have a vector, and in component form I have 3, negative 5. I'm going to write this out as I might put it on a quiz, test, exam, real life, when some hobo math teacher that no longer works at GHS finds you on the street and says, find the magnitude of that vector. Yeah. All right, double bars, magnitude. Magnitude of vector v. Can you tell me what quadrant that vector is going to end in? Four. It's going to end in quadrant four. All right, magnitude. <laughs> Length of that vector. How are we going to get there? Let's, let's graph it. Yeah, we're going to draw a triangle. Three negative five is going to be that vector. Ah, draw a triangle. We've got a right triangle. We've got three, we've got negative five. Pythagorean theorem, he keeps coming back. So we've got. Magnitude is the square root of 3 squared plus negative 5 squared. 9 plus 25. We've got the square root of 34. So magnitude, magnitude, when we have a vector, is always just going to be square root of x squared plus y squared. So when we have this in component form, magnitude is always just going to be the square root x squared plus y squared. How's that look? Oh, yeah, I have another question. Uh -huh. So uh, the temper problem, you know, we've solved it um, with, uh, with like cosine of this above. Would you say on a problem of like, find the, what, what is that, find the magnitude using a trig function? I'll just say find the magnitude. Oh, then you, you can read the side to use whichever. However you want, find the magnitude. Now vectors, two components to a vector. What makes a vector a vector? Uh, direction. Magnitude. magnitude and direction. I gave you this vector in component form. You just found magnitude. Where's the direction? What's the angle that that mag uh, vector follows? We could either say that angle, if we now we do have a ninety degree angle there. We do have a ninety degree angle. This angle. Look at the two sides that we have. We've got the y, we've got the x. Which trig function are we going to use to find the angle? Tangent. So we know tangent, so that's going to be inverse tangent. So we're going to have inverse tangent. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So we're going to have inverse tangent. I'm going to use the signs, negative 5 over 3. We can pop that into the calculator. For consistently, consistency, let's say we're going to be in degrees now. Just because bearings are usually spoken about in degrees. So calculator, be careful in degrees. Tangent inverse, negative 5 over 3. It tells me negative 
59, uh, 59 degrees. We're in quadrant four, so actually it's finding that angle. Negative angle, remember, it's a clockwise rotation. So we'll just go up to 360 minus 59. We'll do 360 minus 59, or plus we'll add 360. If we add 360 here, we get an angle of 301 degrees. So that vector. 3, negative 5, started in component form, we can switch to our standard position. If we rewrite, we find the magnitude. We have square root of 34 at 301 degrees. We've changed it from one to the next. The direction always has to be positive. Let's, it could be negative 59. It could be negative 59. Uh, for consistency, like following a heading, taking a bearing, um, usually it's 0 to 360. 0 to 360 because that's you're used to seeing that around a circle. If I say 301 degrees, we know it's in quadrant 4. Negative 59, eh, it's a little bit, takes you an extra <coughs> second. So standard communication is with a positive angle 0 to 360. How we doing? So far so good. Let's see, what else is on our list? Uh, position vector. Uh, I'll come back to that. Actually, no, let me write this, let me generalize this. One last thing. Negative 5 over 3, just to state it out as a formula like we did with this one, if we're trying to find the angle, it was tangent inverse. It's the y value over the x value. So we've got a formula that gets us our angle. And we do need to be careful. Might need to add 180 degrees or 360 degrees. Why would you add 180? Good question. The why would you need to add 180 degrees? Tangent here came up as negative 59. In which two, well, because we're taking negative 5 over 3, in which two quadrants is tangent negative? In which two quadrants is tangent negative? Two and four. Two and four. What if I gave you the vector, what if instead our vector was negative 3, 5? We, which, that's in quadrant 2. And finding the angle, we would do tangent inverse of negative 5 over 3. And it would give us negative 59 degrees. Negative 59, well, that's telling us quadrant 4. But negative 3, 5 is in quadrant 2. We're at negative 59. And we want to actually get our angle in quadrant 2. We will add 180 to get it going in the opposite direction. So it actually ends up being opposite vectors. So be careful with that. You need to think about which quadrants you reside. Suppose we're running out of time.